Good morning. It's Friday, November 11th, 2022. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, In the School of Prayer, and our scripture is Paul's second letter to the church at Thessalonica, chapter 1. Dear brothers and sisters, we can't help but thank God for you because your faith is flourishing and your love for one another is growing. So we keep on praying for you, asking our God to enable you to live a life worthy of his call. May he give you the power to accomplish all the good things your faith prompts you to do. Then the name of our Lord Jesus will be honored because of the way you live and you will be honored along with him. This is all made possible because of the grace of our God and Lord, Jesus Christ. Every November 11th, I remember Juanita Granny Parker. We weren't related by blood, but she was my sister in Christ, and this is her birthday. She was born in 1911, which numerically expressed is 11-11-11. Today, she would have been 111 years young. It's been 111 years since 11, 11, 11. (laughs) That's a lot of 11s. I've written before about Granny and how she was like Paul to me. Granny was the prayingest person I ever knew. She was intellectually challenged and raised on the same farm she lived her whole life. She was undereducated in many ways, but a PhD when it came to prayer. In that church, it was customary for the pastor to call on a layperson to lead the final prayer. I would sometimes call on Granny to end our worship service. There was never a prayer she offered that didn't convince me I was shortchanged in the praying genes department. She could pray heaven down like no other man, woman, child, or preacher. In many ways, Juanita Parker was a mentor to me of connecting with God on the simplest and best level, honesty, compassion, and unselfishness. I miss her to this day. In an honest look back, I have to confess that my pastoral visits to Granny, who lived next door to the church because she'd given the property to build it, my visits to her were more likely beneficial to the pastor than the parishioner. No matter what else was going on in Granny's life, children, grandchildren, great-grands that were living with her and she was helping to raise, everything stopped when the preacher arrived and we'd set a spell on the front porch. We'd never sit on the back porch because, I suspect, it was the scene of too many gruesome encounters with that mean rooster. But that's another story for another day. As a youngish minister with less than three years under my belt as a pastor, I was still too green to recognize the Tower of Strength sitting nearby. As a Depression-era saint who'd faced more physical, mental, financial, and relational challenges than I've ever had to navigate, now, in my fifth decade of ministry, Granny was tougher than Muhammad Ali in the boxing ring, or Genghis Khan on the battlefield, or a crazed rooster in her backyard. But with God, she was a child, tender, dependent, soft, and faith-filled, It seemed she melted like heated plastic in a mold to the shape of the most faithful saint. No matter how I tried to steer a conversation with Granny or move us to prayer, she was always ahead of me, and she was the one who took the initiative to end our times in prayer for me. I always left her little house shining brighter and a lot stronger than when I'd arrived. For you today... Everyone needs a Granny Parker in their corner, especially would-be preachers and discouraged preachers and sometimes a know-it-all preacher. If you've got a praying saint in your life like Granny, you know it, and you probably treasure that relationship. And if you have one, like my praying 111-year-young on 1111 Granny Parker, maybe it's time you became one, because there's always someone who needs one. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.